Referência à palavra do Senhor, vamos abrir as nossas Bíblias em 1 Rei. Em reverência ao reino da palavra do Senhor, nós vamos abrir as nossas Bíblias em 1 Kings. 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings 18, verse 30. 1 Kings 18, verse 30. Elijah. Amen. Have you found? Let's, let us stand up in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the word of the Lord. This is here in the projection. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Lord, we praise you. Thank you. We're thankful for this moment of fellowship that we have, Lord. Where that you, you can continue blessing your people. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. At the time of uh, the prophet Elijah, there was a king called Ahab, Ahab, whose wife was called Jezebel. And this couple brought lots of harm to the people of God. Because on the time of the kingdom of King Ahab, he introduced through his wife service to the pagan gods. There were there the, the priests of Jasarot and the priests of Baal. And the Bible even mentions that quantity, 850. And those priests and those gods, they brought confusion to Israel in, in a way that the people of God, the people of Israel, they were confused in knowing which God to serve, what was the true God. And the Bible says, my brethren, that our God, the God of Israel, the God creator of heaven and earth, is not a, is not a God of confusion. So at the time, the Lord raises a man, a prophet, prophet Elijah, and he was sent to Israel, to the people of Israel, in order for the people of Israel could have, could rebuild, or could enter into a new covenant with the Lord, because the actions of the people had already broken the covenant with God. And we just read a verse from the Word of God that it says that Elijah called the people. Then Elijah said to all the people, so he called everyone so that everyone from Israel could do at that day, could have a new covenant with their God. So he called all the people and he says, come near to me. So he asked the people to come near to the prophet. Come close to me. It is an expression in the New Testament where the Lord Jesus says, says the following. Come upon me. Come near to me. Or come to me. You who are tired and overloaded and oppressed, and I will bring relief to you because that was the situation of the people at that time. They were oppressed by the false gods, filled with doubts regarding the efficacy of the God of, of, of Israel. So then he calls the people, he conclaims the people. And the Bible says, my brethren, that the entire people came to him. Now we see here something very important and interesting. When the prophet calls the people, so all the people come near to him. And we know that the prophet here speaks of speaks of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit makes a conclamation, 
It is so that we may do, may have a new covenant and pact and an agreement with, with the Lord. And he says the following. And the Bible says, so all the people came near to him. And there was a challenge at that time between the prophet of God, that was, which was the only one, against the 850 50 prophets of Baal. And it looks like it, it was a little bit of a disadvantage. But it was not a disadvantage. It was a great advantage because the prophet is one alone. Baal may have 850 prophets, but the prophet of God is one alone. He is the Holy Spirit of God. And he is sufficient to make the people believe that only the Lord is God. And the Bible says, my brethren, that so the challenge was to cause fire to come down into to the altar. The 850 prophets of Baal and Astaroches, they needed to cause fire to come down into their own altar. If they were not able to do this, then their God was not the tr would not be the true God. And then the word says, if you go and read it, the previous verses, the Bible says that they made a, an offering, they made a sacrifice, they prayed, they humbled themselves, humiliated themselves, and, and nothing happened. But when the people is called by the prophet, prophet Elijah, to make their also offering their holocaust to the Lord. It was necessary first to fix what was broken. And here the word says, explains what was broken. You read, and so what was broken? The altar. So until the altar was repaired, the people was not going to be able to come down. Uh, we just sang a song, Your, we are burning fire. Lord, we want you to burn into our soul, uh, comforting fire, holy fire from the Lord. So the church, pay attention. There's a, there's a song that speaks about it, to, for the church to pay attention. But in order f for in order to have fire, it's first necessary for the altar to be repaired. It, it needs to be rebuilt, restored. And sometimes you want, you want the fire. You want the presence of the Lord in our lives. We want His, His spiritual gifts. We want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I ask you, does God have power to baptize with the Holy Spirit or, or pour out His fire and offer spiritual gifts? Yes or no? Of course. But if the altar is broken, will the Holy Fire come down? This morning we have the youth from the seminar of Hollandale. I've seen fire coming down and I've seen the operation of the, whole, the Lord there. Because the altar there, they were restored. Each testimony that the brethren heard there brought joy, brought hope, brought assurance and conviction, right? That only the Lord, only the Lord is God. And the word says, my brethren, that Elijah then, he begins the process of repairing the altar. And may, we may think with ourselves. Elijah could have first fixed the altar and then called the people. Or he could also repair the altar and made fire come down from heaven and then call the people. Yes, he could. But why did he ask the people you know why? Because then Elijah asked, Lord, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. 
of the faithful are, I ran out of the faithful. And the Lord tells Elijah, there is in the whole Israel, there are 7,000 that did not bow to Baal. And was this people that not bow to Baal that got together there with Elijah so that the altar of the Lord would be rebuilt and it would be restored? And my brethren, one day our altar was destroyed. Our fellowship with the Lord and our covenant with the Lord stopped existing. But as soon, in the same way, the altar one day was destroyed. One day the Lord made the decision to rebuild our spiritual life. And it goes through the altar. And when we look, see there the elements that were upon the altar, first he repairs, he picks up 12 stones that are related to the 12 tribes of Israel. And is really regarding the church to the apostolic ministry, right? The apostles of Christ. And then he places there and restores the author. And the word says, my brethren, that there were even the measurements so that that author could be restored. The Bible says that was the, the width of two seeds. When we speak about seed, when we speak about two, it speaks about fellowship and seed. Seed speaks of what? Is, is the word. And why two? The Old Testament and the New Testament. The two covenants and two pacts and two covenants of the Lord. One for Israel and the other for the church. And the word says, my brethren, that he builds up the, the kindle. Not having enough wood, the fire will extinguish, right? So there needed to be wood. So that when the fire came down, the fire would remain. So then he, the fire would be able to, so the fire would be able to fire uh, consume the entire offering and fire uh, wood is us where our prayer our fasting our praise our prayer man is the wood that needs to be placed also upon the altar remember Isaac he was placed upon the wood uh, upon the altar and Jesus where Jesus was when he died he was upon the wood on the cross so the altar of the sacrifice. So when the altar that was repaired, when the fellowship was restored between God and the people, between the prophet God and the, the people, when the altar was restored, when it was placed upon the altar, the necessary elements for the for the offering. The word says, my brethren, that. From the day forward, the Lord began to act and operate on behalf of the people of Israel. But it is interesting that after everything was ready and and the wood and he said, so he put the animal upon the the wood. Then he has to put water on top of it. So then, when he fills the water, there was also a, uh, an amount of water four vessels filled with water poured it pour it on top of the altar and what do, does do those four vessels of water mean we usually say that the gospel is quadri gospel that Matthew in the presence of, of Jesus as the lion Mark the book of Mark in the presence of Jesus as the lamb Luke introduces Jesus as a man. He was Luke was a doctor. And the fourth gospel introduces Jesus as God, the flying eagle. The cherubim that you see in Ezekiel, the four faces. So when the water was poured out, <coughs> he 
he asks then for the people to repeat. So then he poured four vessels of water and then he poured four more vessels of water and for the third time he poured uh, more water. Three times he poured four vessels of water. So as the water was flowing there, everything was filled with water. When, then, when the people also offer uh, an offering, then Elijah comes and says, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, manifest yourself today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your serve, servant, and according to your word, I have done all those things. So then we enter into the verse that says, So then fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. My brother and sister, the Lord has a project. And for the project of the Lord to take place and be fulfilled in our lives, the altar needs to be re repaired. And only the Lord is able to repair our altar. He is able to re to repair our spiritual life. And the Lord was showing tonight a couple that was going through a moment of coldness, spiritual coldness and doubt and uncertainty. They were they are discouraged in their spiritual walk. It, it was a situation of the people of Israel in those days. There was a lot of information. For one side, the, the prophets of Baal saying things. And on the other side, the prophet of God saying something else, and it brought doubts and uncertainty. And many times our lives is are like this, without, filled with doubts and uncertainty. And we get discouraged in our spiritual walk. We grow colder in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord was showing that uh, during this night, a fire, uh, firewood was lit here. And why was the firewood was lit? because the fellowship in the altar and the altar have been restored. When we plead for the blood of Jesus, our spiritual lives have been restored in the presence of God. And that's why, my brethren, that's what happens. Now we are able to offer our praise, our adoration, to place before the Lord the sacrifice that He, the Lord Jesus, made for our lives. And when we recognize this, this operation of the Lord on our behalf to our benefit. When we, when we study the Word of God and we understand the plan and the project of God upon our lives, when we look the four Gospels that speak about the life and death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to restore our spiritual lives, then the fire comes down upon our lives. So we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, receive spiritual gifts. We are renewed in the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says, my brother, then fire came, came from the Lord and it burned the holocaust, the wood, and also burned the water that was there. And when the whole people saw it, they said, only the Lord is God. Only the Lord is God. So that's what the Lord wants to show us. The Word says that the entire people saw it. Firstly, they heard. They heard a call from the prophet. And then they answered the call to, from the prophet. And the Word says that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And the faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So when the prophet said spoke people the people heard the words of the prophet and they believed in the prophet and when the holy spirit speaks to you with me through a message through a praise through a spiritual gift when you believe that it is god that is speaking to you and revealing himself to your life then you see the glory of god being manifested upon your life the prophet said and people believed and what needed to be repaired was repaired. 
it was necessary uh, uh, repair. And many times we need to repair ourselves. There are a few things that we need to put in order in our lives so that the fellowship may be restored and the author may be restored. And the word says, my brethren, that the entire people participated on the restoration of that author. Why? Because the church, church is the body of Christ. There was a representative there, the prophet, and the quality of the Holy Spirit. And as a representative of the Holy Spirit, so but the whole church is being called for the restoration of this altar. And when we do this, when we present, when the people present themselves and participate, when when the offering is presented, the Lord is pleased. It is the pleasing service to the Lord, a service in which we are in fellowship with the Lord, a service in which the Holy Spirit guide and instruct our lives, and the service where we see the fire from heaven coming down, down upon our lives, a service where the Holocaust is accepted, our, so our gratitude, our praise, our adoration, our prayer are accepted as an offering, and the whole people cease. It was not only the prophet who saw it, but the entire people saw. And the Bible says that they all fell upon their faces. And so, in other words, they recognized and they bowed to the Lord and understood. So now there was no longer any doubt. Why? Because they saw the fire coming down. And they could say, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So when we have an experience with the Holy Spirit, we declare and we testify, look, only the Lord is God. Now, going back from, from the service that we had this morning, God's Without Borders, they saw an operation of the Holy Spirit in their lives and they declare in that place that only the Lord, He is God. And I ask you that when you leave this place, that you declare that only the Lord, He is God. Of Israel, He is the Lord, is the God of our this church, and He is the God of our lives. And the the Lord has shown that during this service, this couple was invited. They accepted the invitation, and they they were guided by the angel of the Lord to come close to that uh, bonfire, and they accepted, and they were guided and led by the hands uh, by the angel. In the word says, my brethren, that the, actually the spiritual gift says that what existed of uh, spiritual age spirit, was removed. They were renewed. Sometimes we grow older in the presence of the Lord, spiritually speaking. When we grow older, the appearance, we can see, we look when I was younger, I was more youthful. When you grow older, you, your beauty <laughs> diminishes, right? The hair grows, goes gray and things begin to fall. <laughs> but the Lord was showing the following, that He was rejuvenating because when we are in God's time the Lord rejuvenates us so when you pick up in the Old Testament the people of Israel they walked for 40 years in the desert their clothing didn't wear out their shoes didn't wear out why is that? because they were in the presence of God and when we are in the presence of God the Lord He renews us and the Lord was showing that He was renewing this couple because today, once again, they met with the Lord. Once again, the Holy Spirit is, has warmed their spiritual life because the altar was repaired and the fellowship was re restored so that they can leave this place saying, Only the Lord is God. Let's sing a song.
going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, praise your name. Praise the Lord for this moment in your holy presence. Lord, because we can feel your holy presence of the Lord in this place. Because of the deeds of the Lord upon our lives. We are not deserving, Lord. But we can feel, Lord, your great love towards us. Lord, we can see how much you love us, Lord. How good, Lord, it is to hear a sweet voice speaking to our hearts, Lord. How good, Lord, is to feel your holy presence, Lord. To feel the Lord touching us as we come into our house, truly, Lord. We can feel the Lord. How good, Lord, is to be here offering our praise, our gratitude for everything that you are for us, Lord. We have, we have no words, Lord, enough words, Lord, to praise you, Lord. But we want to say, Lord, that we love you, Lord, and that we love to serve you, Lord. And because you are imperfect, but you love us in an unconditional way. We want to say that we love to serve you, Lord. There is no other place better, Lord, than to be in your house. And then to feel this peace, this wonderful peace that you give us, Lord, every time we come here, Lord. How good, Lord, it is to see the deeds of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for everything, for everything that you are, everything that you are, and everything that you have done on behalf of our lives, and everything that you ought to do, Lord, because we know and believe that you ought to do much more, Lord. If we continue praising you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, for everything in the holy name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you, Lord. We're thankful because we are in your presence, because the sacrifice of your, of your son Jesus and one day brought us uh, into a fellowship with you, Lord, because the opportunity to be in your house. We praise you, Lord, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit that has spoken to us every day, directed the laws. We praise the Lord because you have provided the Lord every day the resources so that we may continue, Lord, in your presence. We praise you for your manifestation, for the spiritual gifts. We want to praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, because it is the demonstration of your great love towards our lives. Receive our service in adoration, all our adoration that we offer to you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name you say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of all the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The service has come to its end. If any brother and sister needs a prayer, remain where you are and raise your hand. We are going to give you the proper assistance. Amen. Today there are fewer people here because the youth there and a few other brethren went out there to give assistance to the special service that happened at 6.30 of the afternoon in Hallandale. On Tuesday, I'm going to have a meeting of uh, Sunday school through Zoom. And Wednesday, uh, we're going to, at 8 p.m., uh, meeting with the women, through, also through Zoom. On Thursday, also service through Zoom, uh, praise service. And on Saturday, 7.30, and Sunday school in the morning, 10.30, and once again, 7.30, all the service of the weekend here in the church. We are all invited. And early dawn service is on 6 o'clock on Saturday. If anybody desires a prayer, just raise your hand.